Hey shippers, time to get back to basics and answer a fundamental question that can grow to become near existential in both its complexity and simplicity. And that question is, what is canon? It's time for an episode of Fandom Basics because there is no judgment here. Everybody starts somewhere and what is common knowledge to one person is brand new to someone else. And sometimes it can be embarrassing to ask a question when everybody already seems to know the answer. So let's answer this question, what is canon? While in its simplest form, in fiction, canon is the material accepted as officially part of the story in an individual universe of that story. It is often contrasted with or used as the basis for works of fan fiction. It can also be referred to in other ways. Some common ones are continuity, mythos, or verse, but canon is the one that tends to be used the most when it comes to the fan fiction world. So canon is what has officially happened within any given fictional work. So why is that important? Well, when writing a piece of fan fiction, forming a fan theory, or even just having a discussion, a basic knowledge of the material in question can be helpful and even essential for world building. Now, how much of the canon you need to know will vary depending on who you are talking to, and some people can become quite peeved by what they perceive as a lack of canon knowledge, which some will attempt to use to undermine one's opinion. Which should be taken with a grain of salt, as everyone starts somewhere, and some canons can be quite hard to absorb. Which raises another question, how do you know what is officially canon? And how come sometimes figuring it out can be so difficult? Well, typically canon is defined by the creator of the work, i.e. the author of a book or the creator of a series or the director of a film. Certain people working on a project are deemed to have more authority over the text than others based upon their role of involvement creating the characters and the world, or just a sociologically constructed relationship that the audience perceives that certain people have with the text. For example, the director. The the director is not always the writer of the film, however, they are often given much more credit for the creation of the universe, which means that sometimes it can become unclear as to who exactly the keepers of canon are. For example, what happens when a film's director and the actor who played a character in said film have different opinions about a certain character's backstory or motivation? Is the director automatically right? Especially in a case where said backstory has never been depicted. So essentially we're dealing with two different headcanons but on the side of the creators. So who do people listen to? Who people choose really varies from individual to individual, which is why it can be so important for projects to have a united front. Which can also be a reason why sometimes creators get upset when an actor or writer or producer contradict what they say as it creates these conflicting narratives. Which creates another series of questions. What happens when extra canonical information is given away in an interview or at a con, where sometimes creators or actors or anybody involved in a project have been known to joke around with fans, giving information that they later retract, but certain fans will still take that information as 100% canon and will view the retractions as some kind of backtracking or some kind of mandate that's being forced upon the creators, but that it is actually canon. And there can be even more confusion. What if additional information is provided in an alternative source via tie-in, such as a movie novelization or prequel comic, or concurrent series or continuation. All of these things have occurred, and some fans find them divisive, as there are different opinions as to what supersedes in these cases. For example, there is still a debate among some to this day as to whether the Star Trek animated series can be considered canon. There are some that feel that only the episode yesteryear is canon, while the entire rest of it can be discarded, while some feel that it is part of the entire universe, and just because it's animated doesn't make any difference. But why does this matter? Well, some are attached to the idea of the official lore for their own world building purposes, or just so it can be clear what exactly has happened and what hasn't. Some don't want certain things to be canon, so seek validation that it is not. Also, some people are not interested in creating their own works and don't like seeing any change and prefer the official story to all others. Others, however, are much less attached to the official script, and whatever the official canon is, they will take what they want, need, or love like and move on from there, creating a complex headcanon network of their own fan continuity. Fans who do this occasionally run into trouble from canon sticklers, who often assume their disregard for the canon is born out of a lack of knowledge, and discussions can sadly quickly turn insulting. Which brings up another point, why would someone not know the canon? Well, as mentioned, some information is imparted outside of the main source material. So be it an extra feature, an interview on a press tour, an entire tie-in website, or some kind of horizontally marketed material material, there are a lot of avenues by which new information can be coming at you. It is true that it can be 
difficult to keep track of, or one may not have access to this additional material. A person can't learn something they are unaware of. It must also be noted that many fans are a lot more casual with their enjoyment, and knowing the ins and outs of canon is not necessary for their experience. As a result, not everyone is actively seeking out canon, and some absorb it in a more passing manner. For those that are interested, there can be another barrier, and that can be the sheer amount. Some fandoms have huge histories. Comics are a good example of this, where so much has happened and can be near impossible to know everything. However, while imparting canon can be useful, it's important to acknowledge that everyone is coming from positions that do not necessarily hold all the answers, as knowing what happened and when can be time-consuming and difficult, and there's always the chance that something's been missed. And even if it hasn't, imparting that information kindly is much more important than letting someone else know why they're wrong, perhaps simply pointing them to the material in question so that they can come to enjoy it as much as the original poster has. It also must be noted that over time, especially in canons that have such a large history, characters have built up general traits that are a collection of all the canons they have experienced, which means that many interpretations can be deemed as the correct one. It must also be noted that these characters that have such long histories may also have been part of multiple adaptations, which means that there can be many different canons associated with this same character. A good example of this is the Marvel Filmverse, wherein both the comics and the Marvel film universe have different canons, though they can at times draw from each other or inform the other. So what is true of one canon may not necessarily be true of the other, and vice versa. But ultimately, exploring canon should be an enjoyable experience. While being right is a good feeling, no one should be made to feel less than because they did not have access to certain information or simply did not find it pertinent. Working through canon can reveal exciting possibilities for characters you never imagined, and agreeing with the creators is not a necessity. Heck, they can't even agree with each other. Interpretations are up for grabs, which is how new and wonderful versions and worlds are born. Canon is a blueprint, a baseline, an anchor in the world of fandom but anchors can be cast off and moved for brand new adventures. Though there are of course some that feel this leads to anarchy, character assassination, and the destruction of the tone of worlds, which is a valid concern. It is possible to go too far afield and change canon so much the character or world becomes unrecognizable. However, as for canon itself, it's there to be learned, enjoyed, and in the case of fan artists, expanded upon or manipulated. It can get convoluted and overly complex, but at the end of the day, it's nothing to be afraid of, and hopefully you'll find some nice people to help fill in any gaps. I've seen this question pop up a few times, so hopefully this was helpful to those watching. Also side note, because this came up as well, yes canon relationships can be shipped. Shipping is simply the act of supporting two or more characters within some kind of relationship, so they do not have to be a headcanon, it can be something occurring within the material itself. This was Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Check out social media to stay up to date, and as always, stay tuned. There are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.